don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm going to be doing another double page spread in my small, um, no so bag sized journal. Now, I'm not going to do a double double like I did last time, I'm just going to do the inside covers. So the double double last time was the two outside covers and the inside. I'm only going to do the inside today uh, and then later date I'll probably do one on there and probably one on that side as well if you know what I mean. So that's the journal. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. So this is the sheet. So I'm going to leave that one blank, leave that one blank and just work on this double page spread here. Now so recently or oh, I have just um, put my hand in my pocket and tret, tretted, treated, gifted myself, <laughs> if you know what I mean, um, my first set of 12 Distress Oxide sprays. So um, instead of buying a complete set of the releases, I went through all the ones that have been released so far and picked out the first 12 that I like, making sure that I had a really nice kind of colour spread and also picking colours that I can use for my seven days of Halloween. So of course I've got Spiced Marmalade, I've got Wilted Violet, I've got Twisted Citron and I've got, he says trying to find it, Vintage Photo. So I've got those three. So the orange, the purple and the Twisted Citron, the green for Halloween. Um, but I also got pumice stone, so there's a nice kind of brownie grey there, and like I said, vintage photo. I also trip myself to antique linen, so I can add to those. Um, can't get hold of black soot just yet, unfortunately. Um, they are kind of like winging their way across the Atlantic to all the distributors in the UK at the moment, but it may take some time. So those are the colours that I've got. Um, so <clears throat> the other colours that I bought were Broken China, uh, Picked Raspberry, Fired Brick, Peeled Paint and Fossilised Amber. So I got 12 colours and this pot or this box for my cupboard um, will hold actually 26 bottles. So this will get filled up, trust me on that one. Um, so today what I've done or what I want to do is I found this fantastic image of a guy holding uh, an umbrella that I really liked um, and I printed it out on sticker paper but I sized it accordingly so I knew, I knew that it would actually fit on this page. But the colours in this are kind of like a muted um, blue, there's like a hint of green, greyish green and a kind of bluey colour. So those are the colours that I want to play with today. So I've got Broken China. So we're going to be playing with Broken China. There's a hint of green in there, so I'm going to be using the peeled paint. I did say that I've got peeled paint as well, I think. But just to be on the safe side, um, just to tone it down a wee tad, I'm going to be using a little bit of pumice stone. So those are the kind of three colours I'm going to be using in the background. I'm obviously going to be using some stamps too. And on that note, may I introduce you to my two new stencils for September. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can get some dark, dark piece of card so you can say, oh, dark something. Yeah, that'll do. There. My file facts. Okay, so the first stencil I'm going to be using today um, or on this page anyway, is called Bull Wrap. So it's kind of a polka dotty kind of stencil, but when you look closely at the circles, they're not actually circles, they're kind of off, um, not really circles, and they're also higgledy piggledy. So I've called this one Bubble Wrap, or BBLWRP. I'll put the name on the screen now. Um, so this will be being released on Monday, September the 9th. However, pre-orders are being taken now and as all as with all of my um, initial release stencils uh, I only buy a limited edition just in case people don't like them so the first lot 
I've only got a limited edition or a limited edition or a limited amount of these on the website to start off with. Once they've sold, if they sell really well, they'll probably go really quickly. If people don't like it, then yeah, there's probably no rush. Um, but the chances are they may go really quickly because I think people are going to like this one because of those kind of like uh, off set kind of irregular that's the word I'm looking for I suppose irregular shaped circles rather than round rounds so this will be fantastic for adding um, texture paste to as well the second stamp is called Fandango for obvious reasons because it looks like fans now the reason I've done it that way is so that you can get that shape that way so if you put it on like a diamond pattern you get that lovely kind of fan shape but doing it that way it's more square i don't really like i think it just gives a really really nice effect and you can use this um for putting kind of like behind people's heads or give them a halo particularly with your like, paper dolls that kind of stuff um so you could do like a sunrise kind of halo effect around people's heads on that one. I really like it and I think this one is going to be a really really popular one um, but again limited stock to start off with um, and then once they've gone like I said I'll be getting some more in later but it will be probably back end of September when they'll be back in again so if you do like it and you do want it I suggest you get in there quickly. Okay so those are the two stencils that I is going to be using. Just put that file of facts to one side. Okay Right, I've got some Babby Wipes, just in case. I've got my trusty Tim Holtz. Well, it's not actually, is it? It's a Ranger Heat It craft tool. Um, and I've already printed off my quote onto sticker paper, as I did with my main character that I want to use. Um, and I've taken a quote from a famous movie, and I kind of paraphrased it and just altered it slightly, um, just to fit my needs a wee bit better. So, that being said, I now want to crack on and get started with this page. So, because these are all brand new, um, like I said, only arrived in today's post. None of them <laughs> have even been opened. And I know I should have done this before starting the camera. But you know what people are like? Who just gets excited. I just want to get cracking and oh this is going to take forever isn't it there we go <clears throat> where's my bin where is my trash can there it is that can sit there for a second so this one we'll just need to break open the seal on that one too there we go and then i just pull down really quickly that's pretty much going to do it and the last one, the Pumi Stone. Pumi Stone. <clears throat> In case you're wondering, it's not Saturday. I'm filming this on Wednesday. Um, mainly because tomorrow I am going away for five or six days. And I'm my first holiday of the year. It's um, that time of the year when Ian and I pack our, um, our normal clothes away and we venture into steampunk land. It's um, the Asylum Steampunk Festival, the largest steampunk festival um, in the solar system. I would say that because it has been confirmed by um, the European Space Centre and NASA. I know. I know what you're thinking. But yes, they did actually get them to confirm that. So the largest steampunk gathering in the solar system there ain't no larger one anywhere else in the world and it's happening this weekend um, and i will be going with ian and yes i am going to be wearing my steampunk costume <coughs> more than one steampunk costume and i will be taking pictures and videos so i normally do a um, a vlog special from the asylum um, providing it's not tripping it down like it rain like it was last year. Okay, so now I've waffled my way through getting those open. I'm just going to make sure that they they are actually tightened up. <coughs> Give them a decent shake. And I'll get started. Because otherwise, this is going to take forever. So 
So yes, I'm doing this on Wednesday, so this is going to be my Saturday video. Because I've already done one for um, tonight, Wednesday night, which is the vlog for last week. There's one for Thursday, which is absolutely fantastic happy mail, a uh, Halloween happy mail. So if you're watching this on Saturday, that's the one that was on, on Thursday, and this obviously is for Saturday. And then I'm back again on late Monday night, so I'll be back home again on Tuesday. Ready to start all over again. Okay, I'm ready to get started. So Distress Oxide Spray. I've jiggled my sprays is up. So let's, let's see what we can do. I haven't gessoed, in case you're wondering. I haven't gessoed at all. Okay, greens. Okay, pumice stone. Actually, I probably should have dried that off first, shouldn't I? I should have, have tried to dry that off first. Okay, I'll get this dry and then I'll do my second layer and then I'll come back. Okay, that should be enough. Um, you can see that there are still some wet areas down the crease. There's a little bit at the side here and a little bit at the side here. And one or two little bits down at the bottom. That's okay. I've got some paper towel. And I'm just going to push down and I'm just going to lift those little areas off. In the grand scheme of things, it ain't going to make too much of a difference. And I'll just lift that bit there. Okay, that is pretty much dry now. So I've got all that spare kind of on the edge that I'm just going to wipe away. I'm not going to use a, actually yeah, I am going to use a baby wipe. See, my OCD is kicking in boys and girls. There we go, that'll do. I'm not going to go mad. Ain't going mad. Oh my dear. Yeah, I can hear you out there going <laughs> too late for that. Okay, so I've got the first layer dry, pretty much. Um, actually, there's a little bit more wet just on that edge there, look, missed that. So first layer, okay, so I'm going to come back in with that pumice stone now. Spin that round. Okay, let's get that dry. There's gonna be a lot of drying. A lot of drying. Okay, so that first couple of layers have now dried. I haven't oxidized anything. I haven't added any water to any of the pages just yet. So here's that bubble wrap stencil. So I'm gonna lay it just down over the top. And I've got a baby wipe and I'm just going to rub gently through the stencil just to get a little bit of a ghosting effect on it. There. And then I need Oh, just to dry that off because I don't want to transfer that over and do some more over at this side. Just do a quick rub. And then blocked, lift, clear. And then once again, I'll go down this side in the middle. Blocked. Lift. Clean. Bin. Okay. 
get that dry. Bear in mind, I still haven't sprayed anything with any water yet. Just the water from the baby wipe. Okay, so that little bit of stenciling is dry. Now I've got a little mister. I have to have this labelled up because I also have an identical one that's got alcohol in it. And we don't want to get those two mixed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just gently just activate now with a little bit of water. I don't do too much. And you can see how that's just started to pull the colour. Just make it a little bit more vibrant. So again, I'm going to let that work for a second or two and then I'm going to jump back in with my heat gun. Try and flatten it out as I'm going. And try not to burn your fingers. Okay, so that's dried and you can see all those lovely kind of water droplet effects that I've got in the background now. So I want to bring in some darker elements to it. Now I don't have the black soot distress oxide spray but I do have black soot in the distress oxide ink pad. So I've got my blending foam and a brand new ink blender. So I'm just going to come in around the edges. Now this is going to give me um, just a little kind of border dark border all the way around the page. Excuse the rattling noises. Okay, so you've seen me do that a little bit, so I'll just speed up and whiz through this. Okay, so that is pretty much got that black all the way around. Now if you're wondering what the wobbling noises are, I have a bookcase just over to my right, which is a small bookcase and it's just sitting on the edge of this table here and I haven't secured it to the wall yet. I haven't got around to it so that's why I've still got a little bit of a wobble. So, okay, so that I've, I've now got my kind of black border all the way around. So I'm just going to grab a baby wipe. I just want to give my fingers a little bit of a clean before I just move that to one side and then just try and get rid of that black soot off the map. Off the map? Off the mat. Blow it off the map. Okay. Gone. never to be seen again in this video, possibly. Okay, so we've got that. Um, I'm going to have a look now at my figure and I want to put him at an angle about there. So probably actually like that. So it looks as though it's kind of floating now I've deliberately left the background on him um, because it was originally on like an old book text and I thought that that just added an extra little dimension into the background of the figure rather than cutting him or fussy cutting him really really close which I don't think would have really added much to it. So I'm going to start by putting him about there Hopefully, not put him down. Yeah, that's going to be perfect actually. Just rub my finger over the top. Like I said, I printed it on sticker paper. Just give that a wee rub. Which is cool. 
like that. And then I've got my quote. And I've printed this pretty chunky, really. Um, so that I've got the opportunity just to slim it down a wee tad and just change the shape slightly. I'm going to make it a little kind of mid-century-ish. So just by varying the widths and the heights to following the line of the letters. So that's the first one. Oh, little creature. Put that there. There's a word missing. Can you believe there's a word missing? <gasps> Where's it gone? Back in a mo. Okay, found it. When I was cutting it out earlier from the main sheet, I was doing it downstairs while I was talking to my mum and dad, who are both staying here over the next few days with Mr. Bentley while we're away. So they're already ensconced here. I must have dropped one on the floor and it was still there. Said. I'm just kind of varying the size and the shape of the word blocks just to give it a little bit of added interest I'm trying to keep the cuts as straight as I can do come on there we go Rather than just having your, your boring kind of blocks, have a play with the shapes. And the shapes kind of fit with the fact that you've got that angular um, border all the way around him. So, those of you in the know will have probably, or of a certain age, um, will possibly already recognise the quote. If not, all will be revealed. Okay. That's it. That. Okay, so where we're going, he won't be needing roads. Obviously, it looks as though he's taking off, which is fine. And the quote is paraphrased from, I think, it's either the first or the second Back to the Future film, where the DeLorean turns up, but this time, instead of it being on wheels, it levitates and then flies. And it's, the quote is, roads, where we're going, you won't be needing roads. So I've just or something similar to that anyway. So, <laughs> so we've got that now then. So I need, or I would like, the Fandango stencil this time and I'm going to put that just over his head. And I'm just gonna very, very, very gently try and remove a little bit of color from around 
the head area there just to kind of create that halo but I may end up just taking the top surface of the paper off a little but that's fine don't mind that because it's just going to give him that little bit of a halo around his head. Can you see that? I'll just block that. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so let's also see whether or not we can do that into the corners. And that's going to lighten Corners up too. Get some. That's it. That's just going to lift those off. So, again, another use for a stencil. Creating just a few kind of decorative corners. Never mind just actually using it as a stencil for um, putting paint and ink through, but actually using it to create visual effects like this can also add to your arsenal of techniques. Good, it's good. Well, I think so anyway. And seeing as this is my art journal page, that's all that really matters. Don't it? Don't have to please anybody but me. stencil already. Ta -da -da -da. That didn't take long did it? Okay so of course I need to add in some scribbles that I want. I need, must have, must have, must have my Pigma Micron PN pen. This is the one that's got that kind of like felt tippy edge to it and of course I'm going to do um, scribbly border around the blocks It's actually a little bit wet still. I may have to resolve to a different one. Resolve? Is that the right word? I think it is. Probably would have been better if I'd have just used an ordinary biro actually. <clears throat> but 
you know what? He lives and learns. I'm sure I had, I did have, there we go, ordinary barrel pen. Ordinary barrel pen. That's it, just to get it going. There we are. That's much better. Okay, so what I can also do is now just do the similar sort of blocky around my character. Sounds like I'm getting sounds of the um, mum watching TV downstairs, and it sounds as though she's watching an episode of Stargate. A rerun, obviously. She likes Richard Dean Anderson. that Kurt Russell played in the film. For those that know about these things, I like the effect of carrying over the edge and making that a bit angular because it kind of fits in with this over here. So to that end I'm also going to um, do Come on pen, don't let me down. It's probably because the page is still a little bit damp in some places. But that's okay. Nobody said you can't use ordinary barrows. Why not just use what you've got in your stash where you can lay your hands on really easy? I'm sure, rather than going out and buying really expensive food ball pens and Pigma Micron whatevers or food ball pens, did I mention food ball pens? Um, <clears throat> that kind of thing. Just grab a biro. You know people are, are you know quite concerned sometimes about them being you know archival you know if you're doing this for you and you don't really expect it to last for a hundred years you know then what does it matter if you do want to create an heirloom then you know then you may have to consider the type of pens that you're using but nine times out of ten do you really do you really need to okay so I've got that I just want to add some splatters now so to do that I'm going to do something slightly slightly different instead of using black ink or black paint I'm going to try and use some of the oxide a little bit of water you see how it mixes now it's made up of dyes and pigments so you should theoretically be able to get a wet mix. Just 
definitely watching Stargate, I recognise the music. Now that obviously, it's oxidised, so it's going to die back a little bit. It's not going to be really, really in your face, and you're going to get that kind of like nice speckly effect in that background, which I particularly like. Likey likey. Let's give that a try. Okay, so those splatters have kind of died back a little bit. You've got them. Almost looks like a little bit of foxing in the paper, doesn't it? I just want to add a little bit more, um, just a little bit more darkness into the background here. So I'm, I am actually going to use some archival ink. I've got some jet black archival ink. Um, I'm not going to bother with a stamp block. I don't really need to. I'll just use the lid. And I'm just going to ink that up and then just to add a little bit of stamped text just to kind of break that background up a little bit. I'm just going to move that there, create a kind of mask. Okay, so that now looks like I've put that over the top. Yeah, like that. Do the same thing again just there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And that's it, I think. Oh, that was the collector's edition number two French script from Indigo Blue. It's a very, very inexpensive, what they call, uh, well, not a dinky, but it's just a, a little small stamp, a little small stamp, there's a tautology. Um, it's a small stamp, <laughs> quite affordable. Um, French, illegible French script. It's cool, perfect for little projects. So put that to one side and I think, I think I'm almost done. There is something lacking and I'm not really sure what it is. I think it's white. We need some white. Okay, I've got Dina Wakeley white paint. We're gonna to have to do some white splatters as well. It's no good. We're gonna to have to go there. We are going to have to go there. Just put my hand just whiz that round. Of course it is going to react again because there's water in there to the oxides but do you know what? Me don't care. That's it, a little bit more heaviness just there. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> now, now, I'm happy. Or happy-ish. No, not happy-ish, as happy as I'm gonna get, I think. Yeah, look, the white paint started to react with the oxide and started to bleed and bleach some of the colour through. So it is going to end up being a, um, a more subdued splattery effect anyway, but I love the background. I love the background. So I'll just get that dry and I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I don't think I want to do any more to this page. Um, so I'm just going to sign it and date it and have done with it. So I'm just going to sign it across the bottom. And what date is it today? He says, grabbing his phone, 21st of August. I did say it was Wednesday, 2019. So that's it. I like it. So, use your imagination because where we're going, you won't be needing roads. 
I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video for more little projects like this one. Of course, I will end up doing on the back on this one. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.